Okay, what we have here today is a timber frame passive house in the making and um, I'm the owner and the builder and the installer on it. So I can specify the materials and obviously I pick, uh, I pick the best I, I can get my hands on. And uh, one of the products I'm using here is this Solitex Adiro from Foclima. And it's basically it's a sticky, a complete, like a fully sticky um, membrane for walls and roofs and uh, flat roofs. And it also is a temporary weather protection and water tightness uh, membrane. And the reason I pick it is uh, there's just a couple of things about it that I really like is it's easy to install. You don't need any mechanical fasteners like staples or nails or anything alike. But what really blows my mind is um, it's instant water and weather tightness. So the minute, the minute it's on, I'll stick it on. You can see some of it's already installed here. You stick it on and that's it. Water tight, wind tight, it's even air tight. And um, so that's why I'm using it on the house. And the build up of the house is <clears throat> basically it's a twin stud timber frame. So I have a load bearing outer stud uh, with a racking board. And in that case, the racking board is a diffusion open um, wood based racking board. So it does allow moisture to some extent to evaporate to the outside. And the uh, Proclima membranes, they like breathable or diffusion open as well. So it's, it's a good match. Plus, it's really good ground for the membrane to stick onto. And my plan on the house was from the very beginning to build the outer shell. Like we're living in Ireland, we all know the weather, the wind, we know the rain. And uh, my aim was build the foundation, put up the load bearing frame and get uh, the house weather tight and water tight as quick as I possibly can. And for that, the Adiro membrane for me is a, it, it's definitely a no brainer. Like, you know, there's no flapping in the wind. There's no, there's no fast. I don't even need the button at this stage. So it's peel and stick and peace of mind. And the way I do it is um, obviously you want to start at the bottom and overlap the membranes so that the water runs off. Um, we have a 15 centimeter overlap here in the two. And later on, I'll show you a little trick because we had a bigger scaffolding here. That mean, meant we had to do the top gable first before we could do the bottom, which is basically the wrong way around. But sometimes you just get into those situations and have to make the most of it. And yeah, there's a little trick on how to maintain the overlap properly um, that I'm going to show you a little later. So now to get us started here and um, show the basic process of installing the Adiro membrane, it's like, to be honest, super simple. Like with most uh, membranes, we just mark the roll on the, on the wall. So in that case, it's 142 and a half uh, meters to there. And uh, we do that left and right. So in that case, I'll have a guide here anyway. And um, what is important, like if you're installing membranes which are not sticky, you always have a bit of way of moving them around and adjusting them slightly. Now with the sticky membrane, you kind of only have one shot. And the best way is to have a really good straight line. So we're using a chalk line here. Ping the line and work off that line. <clears throat> Now there's always different ways of installing products and materials and every tradesperson might have his own way or own trick or 
you know, for some it works a little better this way or that way. Um, I think pinging the line and then stick to the line is is the um, uh, is the most important part of installing the membrane. So once I follow the line really accurately, everything else falls into place and the job is pretty easy. Now I'm just going to measure the length of it as well. So that's a 7 meter and 60 and I just like to give me a bit of uh, bit of slack so I make it something like 7 meter 70 <coughs> and on the roll here again there's all different ways of um, counting it or doing it once I know the length of membrane that I need I can just take it off the roll and uh, you can see there's measurements here um, a big mark is a one meter line a small mark is 10 centimeters and then a medium mark is half a meter. So I need 7 meter 70 here for the wall. So this is actually pretty perfect. That's 20 centimeter here. That's 70 centimeter to here. And from here on, I can just roll down and count. So I have the 70 and I go like 1 meter 70. Oop. 2 meter 70 and so on and so forth until I get the 770. And um, for cutting the membrane, it's obviously it's quite important that it's cut at the right angle. And I'm just using the roll here as my guide. So I just cut down the roll and that's pretty much exactly at 90 degree angle. There's also those marks on the membrane that you can follow to make sure you stay straight. So that's it here. I'll put the roll away. The easiest here now is to actually roll it up again so that you have a roll in your hand rather than using it as, it, as it's laying there. Okay, that's the roll ready now to install and um, it has a small split section here at the top. That split section is to make the start a bit easier otherwise you would basically have one big tape. So I peel off the split section here for about a meter or thereabout. And again, it is really important that I get a good straight start across the line so that I have to correct as little as possible while I, when I go. So I'm setting this bang on on the line. And now it's really just important to keep it moving and keep it bang on on the line. While I go, I just give it a gentle rub. And uh, you can go ahead a little bit. Now, if I come to window openings, it obviously depends on how big they are. Um, if it's a big sliding, o sliding door opening, I I would stop here now, but because I want to cover the bottom and this, I just go straight across it. I'm 
just make sure I really land on that line. Now, the membrane is also fairly heavy and not very flexible, which really helps to keep the line. Um, it's actually really nice to work with it. So, I just bring it across there. Now, this is really half the battle, and so far I'm really happy with it. So we go and peel off the bigger part, the, the, big, the, the main part of it. And um, on a wall, because it kind of hangs off the wall a bit, and even though it is sticky, it's not quite as sticky as air tightness tape, so it's just a little less. So um, it means even if it's touching the wall a little bit, it won't kind of stick completely instantly. So here I'm just a bit bold and just take the whole lot off, like bang, just peel it off. So that's it now and <coughs> because I have the window I kind of split the areas in two now. So I look at this part first. There, you can see there's a little bit of a ray forming here. So I can just pull that back again a bit, wobble it a bit, get a bit of air in behind and I just go smooth down. Bam! That's fixing it there. And I just Pull a little there and go down there. And I do the same over here. And that's basically it. Um, you can see what I mean in the beginning with peel it, stick it, bam, water tight, wind tight. Um, one additional step now is to give it a good rub so that it sticks permanently. It's sticking really well now. You can see no creases, no bubbles, no nothing. It's straight exactly as it should be. And for normal air tightness work or tapes, have the small press fix. Now for an XXL tape basically we need a bigger yoke so the rolls come with a press fix that size and uh, just go along and give it a good good rub now top to bottom and as with everything sticky 
it's the initial pressure that's important. So give it that initial good pressure and it will last and stick. <laughs> Now, <clears throat> if you ever get little bubbles, try to move them, like for example, into the window opening. So even so they're there, you can still kind of manipulate them to some extent, move them away from the membrane out of the... Okay, yeah, so obviously uh, with all membrane work and water tightness, weather tightness, it's important to start from the bottom up and then overlap, kind of ship lap so that the water always runs off and it's never caught at the edge or an overlap. Um, however, you can see here we already installed the top of the gable and that's simply because we had a scaffolding here before and I knew it will come down and I just don't want to set it up again just for that little bit. So we decided while the scaffolding is there, we do the top and then we fill in from the bottom. Now this leaves us with that crucial junction here where the two membranes meet. And if we'd done it the normal way, we would now come up with the next sheet of membrane and overlap the, the adhero here in the wrong way. So to prevent and to prepare for this, what we did is we just used one of the small um, release strips there. And when we installed this membrane here at the gable, we basically, we stapled, we stapled the release strip onto the wall and installed the membrane onto that release strip so that we have a new release strip at the bottom of it that I now can fold up, install my membrane sheet here and then overlap it in the correct way. Um, again, that would be a little easier if it's a membrane which is not fully adhesive. Um, but with this one, well, that would be one little trick to get you out of a situation like. <laughs> 